ABC7. One of baseball's oldest rivalries, spending the weekend in St. Louis, the Cubs and the Cardinals meeting for the seventh time this season. Valuable ground in the division on the line for the Cubs within striking distance as we get closer to the season's midpoint. It's the Cubs and Cardinals in prime time right here on ABC7. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Bush Stadium. I am your hostess, Dion Miller. Just eight and a half games separate the Cubs and the Cardinals in the Central Division. The closest the Cubs have been to first place this late in the season since 2009. A big reason, they keep finding a way to win. Cubs come into this series having won four of their last six. Cardinals have won five of their last six. Obviously, something has to give tonight. We will talk about it with the guys who will call this game with Len Casper and Jim Deshays in just a couple of minutes. Also, second Trip to St. Louis for Cubs rookie Chris Bryant. How is the third baseman handling the ups and downs of his first year? He will talk to you about that. And of course, the always entertaining skipper Joe Madden. We will hear from him. He never disappoints as we get set for a great pitching matchup between John Lackey and Jake Arietta. Arietta coming off arguably his best performance of the season. We bring in the guys from the booth, Len and JD. And guys, after the Cubs split with the Dodgers, nothing but confidence coming from that clubhouse. Do you think this is a better team? than the one that dropped three out of four the last time they were here in early May. I think so, Dion. And Joe Madden has said really since uh, the season started that this young club, J.D., should just get better and better every game, every week, every month. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, we've seen marked improvement from the likes of Addison Russell. We've seen Anthony Rizzo be good from day one. He went through a little mini slump, but he's been red hot of late. The pitching has held things together. Offensively, this club really has struggled a little bit over the last couple weeks, but because the pitching has been so good, they've managed to win more than their fair share of games. And the pitching has carried the Cardinals this year. They're on a pace to win 108 games, but with the injuries they've been dealt with, uh, Matt Holiday, Matt Adams, some other guys picking up the slack, Jason Hayward in particular, he's been getting better and better each month. Yeah, and uh, the last time we were here, people were saying, what a bad trade because the Cardinals traded Shelby Miller to Atlanta, and he's been outstanding, and Jason Hayward really struggled early in the year in April. He didn't hit much at all. You know all about the defense has won two gold gloves, including last year. But May much better. June he's been red hot, and over the last eight games, he's been really something else, hitting 438 with an 875 slugging and four long ones. Yeah, not just the usual suspects with Hayward and Wong and Reynolds and those kinds of guys really pitching in. And as Dion mentioned, an excellent Cadillac pitching matchup tonight. Jake Arrieta and John Lackey. Yeah, Jake Arrieta has been very good in his career against St. Louis this year. He's made two starts, 1-1, one, one, lost one. ERA below uh, three. His ERA in his career against St. Louis, is, St. Louis is below two. Lackey, just a good, solid veteran pitcher. Last five starts, 4-1 and one with a 382. And Dion, pretty good uh, bargain. John Lackey making the minimum this year because of a contract he signed with Theo Epstein, and the guys they traded away are in the minor leagues with the Red Sox. Back to you. Yeah, Lackey, very good. Fan 10 Cubs the last time we were here. Got Chris Bryant three times. Speaking of the Cubs' rookie third baseman, we will chat with him coming up as we continue to get you ready for the first pitch from Bush Stadium.
is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. By DeVry University, different on purpose. By American Family Insurance, insure carefully, dream fearlessly. By Jeep, come discover great deals during the Jeep Drive and Discover event. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Welcome back to Cubs Baseball on ABC7. A Central Division showdown tonight between the Cubs and the Cardinals coming up. Earlier today, I got a chance to sit down with Cubs rookie Chris Bryant. Here's the third baseman. What have you learned about this rivalry in a short amount of time? Um, you know, I, I, just, I noticed that it's, I think it's kind of a respectful rivalry. Mm -hmm. I think we have a, a tremendous respect for one another. Uh, I think our fans respect each other. Um, it's just cool because, you know, obviously we're in St. Louis and their fans want their team to win, but they respect, uh, you know, a good play or, you know, a good at bat, um, and as do our fans too. So um, it's pretty cool to see that. It's been a while since the Cubs were respectable in the Central Division. Do you feel like that is changing? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, obviously it's my first year here, so I don't know. I can't really speak on the past, but, um, you know, just hearing what other players are saying about us and, it's nothing but good things and how we have a whole lot of fun. Our, our energy is always up. We have a great time in the dugout and playing the game. And, um, you know, hopefully we can con continue that. You split the series with the Dodgers, but a great way to start for you. Two home runs off Clayton Kershaw. Is that a, a big moment for you in your career? I mean, uh, I guess it's uh, one of the ones I'll remember. Uh, but, you know, I can't really think of it as a, you know just a certain pitcher you know I try to go up there and not really worry about who's pitching but obviously it's different when you got a guy like him on the mound so um, and he's such a good guy too he's the best one of the best pitchers in the game so um, you know for me to do that just gives me a whole lot of confidence moving forward. A very tough pitcher on the mound tonight in John Lackey what makes him so tough last time you guys were here he struck out 10 Cubs three times he got you. Yeah he got me he got me good. Um, but um, he, I think he's just a, a bulldog on the mound. Um, and, you know, just growing up watching him, too, it was kind of cool watching him pitch. He's a, a very good competitor. He wants his team to win every time he's out there. So, um, you know, but as a, you know, a player on the other team, we can kind of feed off that, too, and get that same energy. And um, I think it'll be a good game tonight. You guys have had nine walk-off wins, 31-run games, and really close games. What does winning in those situations do for a young clubhouse? I think it just gives us the confidence that we can do it. I mean, we can beat any team out there, and, you know, when we're in a close ball game, I think it's, uh, you know, just good going forward knowing that, you know, we don't have to press, you know, for only a five one run because we've won a lot of those games. So it uh, just gives us that peace of mind that we can do it. And, um, you know, I mean, those games are obviously really fun, you know, because, uh, you know, when you're in the – the, the, more, the higher scoring games, sometimes you kind of get lost in the fact that you give away some of the bats and you're not really as focused as you should be. So uh, we enjoy playing those one-run games. When we come back, we'll sit down with the manager. Skipper Joe Madden talks about this rivalry.
everyone finding their seats, getting set for a showdown between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Everyone in this building understanding the rivalry and what is at stake for the Cubs as they look to gain some ground in the Central Division. But skipper Joe Madden not about to call anything about this weekend a must win. Um, I, I, my standard line, and I really believe this, is that I don't apply any more weight to any particular game. I don't want us to do that ever because if you do and you don't, then it's almost like a mental devastating moment. And all I want us to do is play tonight's game, focus on today's Friday, I think, focus on Friday's game, and you try to win tonight's game, and after that's over, then you focus on the next. They are focused on getting game one in this three-game series. First pitch coming up in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Cubs on ABC7. And this high-definition broadcast is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Now the Cubs lineup, it is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Just three runs over their last three games. Cubs uh, one and two during this stretch. Fowler, Rizzo, and Bryant. Good to see Dexter back in the lineup. Chris Bryant left early yesterday due to the flu-like symptoms, but feeling much better today. Montero. Coglin, Castro in the middle. Mike Baxter gets a start again in right. Jake Arietta, the pitcher, looking for his first hit. And the rookie, Addison Russell, batting ninth. Cardinals defensively. It's brought to you by Nissan. The rookie, Gritchick, is in left field tonight. John Jay in center. The gold glover, Hayward, in right. Carpenter Peralta on the left side of the infield. Peralta's only made three errors this year. Wong and Reynolds. On the right side, Reynolds, the everyday guy now that Matt Adams is hurt. And multiple, multiple, multiple gold glove winner, Yadier Molina, behind the plate. For, What's the double multiple? Uh, multiple, multiple. Does it mean a 1,000? No, he's got a many. There's John Lackey, 6'6", 235. He's 36 years old. And this will be his 15th start. Yeah. And uh, lights out here in his home ballpark. He's 5-1 and one here this year with a 181 ERA and seven starts. And away we go as Dexter Fowler takes a strike. Jim Wolf behind the plate. Adrian Johnson at first. Bill Miller, the crew chief, at second. Doug Eddings is at third as Lackey comes back quickly and misses off the inside corner on a fastball. Fowler back in the lineup. He missed three starts due to a sprained left ankle. Did get a pinch hit at bat in all three games and played the outfield late yesterday.
Huge crowd as always here in St. Louis. Should be the case all weekend, and they're all night games. Off the outside, two and two. Lackey with outstanding control, doesn't walk many. He's pretty aggressive, attacks the strike zone, fastball, slider, curveball, and change. Fowler tried to hold, but he could not. For strike three. Your first pitch weather for tonight brought to you by Four Seasons Heating and Air Conditioning. For all the right reasons, call 866 Four Seasons. 75. A little breezy. How about that? It's late in June, 75 degrees in St. Louis. Yeah, about as good as you're going to get. I would agree with you. Here's Anthony Rizzo. Three hits, two doubles yesterday in the loss to the Dodgers. Strike call. He leads the National League with 23 two base hits. Putting together an MVP type first half. One and one the count. Lacking a guy in certain spots when he gets in a jam, he will pitch around certain guys. It's kind of a veteran move. Yeah, he knows. Who he's uh, who he matches up with better than others. Carpenter out and makes a nice catch. Got right to the spot on a tricky little play for an infielder. Two outs. How about our Mercedes Benz keys to the game? Be ready to hit. Yeah, John Lackey throws first pitch strikes better than 70% of the time. He's among the league leaders in that category. Handle Hayward, we talked about how hot he was, and he's been good against Jake Arrieta in his career. Keep it clean. You got to play a tight game. To try to beat the Cardinals here in their home ballpark where they've only lost one series all year. Bryant fouls and Lackey third in the National League and pitches per inning. So he gets ahead early and usually has at bats finished pretty early. Speaking of early, Chris Bryant exited early yesterday with the flu like symptoms which had been bugging him for a few days dating. Back to the Minnesota series, but good to go tonight. One and two the count. Cubs looking for their 40th win on the year. Got the second wild card spot currently in the National League. They're a half game behind the Pirates and a half a game ahead of the Giants. Meanwhile, the Cardinals had not gotten off to a start like this since 1944. They've won two of every three games. They're the only team in baseball with a winning percentage of above 600. 667. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Lackey makes quick work of the Cubs in the first inning. Cardinals coming up against Jake Arietta.
starting lineup, two of their three mats are on the DL, Holiday and Adams. Carpenter's healthy, and all of their Coltons are healthy, too. They only have one. Wong, Carpenter, Peralta, Mark Reynolds, Jason Hayward. We mentioned him in the open. Yadier Molina heating up. Randall Gritchick's been very good. He's in left, Jay in center, and Lackey, the pitcher, hitting ninth. Cubs defense play. It's brought to you by Toyota. Coglin, welcome back. Fowler to the starting lineup. He's in center. Mike Baxter in right. Chris Bryant, the new Papa. Starlin Castro on the left side of the infield. Russell Rizzo, right side. Montero behind the plate. Big Jake Arietta on the mound. 6'4, 225, coming off a complete game shutout win at Minnesota. 7 and 5, 307 ERA for Arietta. Punched out seven, didn't walk anybody in that shutout. He was throwing 97 miles an hour. That is a fair ball. Wong on his way to second. Here's a throw by Coglin. Late. Colton Wong with a leadoff double. That's just a bit of bad fortune there for Arietta. Not solid contact at all by Wong. Trying to crowd him with the heater. Or backdoor cutter looked like, and he just chops it on the ground. Well, the Cardinals don't hit a ton of home runs, but they do lead the National League in doubles. Middle of the pack, eight in runs scored. At 265 as a team, that's third best in the National League. They'll take their walks. A couple of former college teammates matching up here. Jake Arietta and Matt Carpenter. Carpenter now 0 for 14 lifetime against Arietta, although he does move Wong to third. Johnny Peralta and early call to move the infield in. Peralta leads the Cardinals in average hits, homers, and RBIs. A lot of times you'll pull the infield in in this situation based on the pitcher on the other side. If he's a guy you feel like is going to be really tough to score against. And I think that's part of the equation here. The other part of it is your own guy on the mound. Even if you give up a base hit here through the drawn in infield, you know, with a guy like Gary on the mound, you're less likely to have that blow up into a big inning. If that's your fifth starter out there, you might concede this run, keep the infield back for fear of it blowing up into a big inning. Peralta's put together a fine start through 70 games. Hitting over 300. And leads their club in all those categories average hits, home runs, RBI. Should be an all star when you look at those numbers. Ground ball, runner going, throw to the plate, should be in time. It is. Wong is out. He was going on contact. That will go six to two. Buffini wants the video guys to take another look at it, but I don't think Wong ever really got to the plate. A quick shuffle to the right by Castro. Yeah, that's, never did. It's an easy one. There will be no challenge here. They may have been wondering about the blocking the plate rule. He had that back corner available to him. He had to go over the bat to try to get there. And I think that going on contact there with, with one out, <coughs> or excuse me, with the infield in is also because of Arietta on the mound. I think that the, the Arietta Reynolds matchup. Matheny feels like it was worth the gamble to try to score there. Reynolds is dangerous. Hits a lot of home runs, but he strikes out a bunch. Strike one on him. He had a big series here the last time the Cubs were in town. First inning grand slam off Travis Wood. And May 4th and the game winning hit off the bench the following night, but he flies out this time and the inning is over. Nothing, nothing after one.
Lewis Busch Stadium scoreless between the Cubs and the Cardinals as we get set for the second inning. First game, uh, first start for Starlin Castro since he was away from the team for the birth of his beautiful daughter, Scarlett. I got a chance to chat with the Cubs shortstop about that today. He said it was unbelievable as he beamed from ear to ear showing me pictures of her. Told me just how beautiful she was over and over again. Now he does have a two-year-old son. He said he's been warned how different it is to be the father of a little girl. It was clear she may only be a couple days old, but she has stolen daddy's heart, guys. <laughs> and uh, joins big brother Starlin Jr., as you mentioned, Dion. So good to have Papa back in the lineup. And Miguel Montero, one strike on the Cubs catcher as we start the second inning. And J.D., we're keeping an eye on Max Scherzer tonight as well. Perfect through five innings at Philadelphia. Three nothing Nationals. Big news there earlier today is Ryan Sandberg resigned as a Philly skipper. More on that later as Gritchick makes a catch. Well, let's do it right now. Ryan Sandberg stepping down. A very difficult year for the Phillies. And they seem to be on the verge of some major changes at the top of their organization. Reports regarding former. The Cubs general manager and president Andy McPhail. Yeah, it seems like uh, if the if there's where there's smoke, there's fire. It's only a matter of time before Andy McPhail moves into a leadership position. And I'm not sure exactly what he will do. Ruben Amaro, the general manager, appears to be in trouble. Uh, tough, tough situation for Rhino in his first major league managerial stint. Uh, just the timing was horrible. They were so good for so long there in Philadelphia, but he caught them at the. In the middle of that downturn, and they don't have a lot of prospects. They got a lot of veteran guys that are nearing the ends of their careers, making a lot of money, contracts that are hard to move. Chicago native Pete McCannon, the third base coach, will take over on an interim basis. One and one on Chris Coglin. Fouled away. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago where the Phillies were in the playoffs every year. They had you know, selling out every night. They had the best TV ratings in baseball. Maybe hung on to some of those guys just a little too long and didn't take care of things down on the farm. Of course, when you're winning all the time, you're not at the top of the draft board. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's hard to know when to. Yeah. Really proverbial plug, especially when you are selling tickets. Yeah, and you've won championships. So folks, we know you love this guy, but uh, we're going to move him. Coglin seven for twelve against John Lackey. As he works a full count here. Cubs as a team over the last week, hitting just 228. One of the things Joe Madden was stressing is, is you need to take more walks, need to be more patient. We'll do it again. As he says, organize the strike zone. Now, I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth here tonight because we talked about Lackey and how often he throws strike one more than just about any pitcher in baseball. So you got to be ready to hit. But that doesn't mean you just start chasing. And, and when you get into those deep counts, a lot of hitters get anxious and they're thinking about trying to hit. I need to get a hit as opposed to I need to have a good at bat and willing to take that walk. <laughs> did you see that? Coglin asked for time pretty late and John Lackey did not like it. One bit. Which forced a little smirk from Coglin. Low ball four. Accepted his walk. Right on cue. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 86th All-Star Game coverage begins at 6 p.m. Central on Tuesday, July 14th. Cast your vote for your favorite Cubs players at Cubs.com. Here is Castro. Played the final four innings yesterday, one for 14 in the series against the Dodgers. He bats the Cubs first base runner. It's Coglin at first being held by Reynolds. One game.
gets by and Cochran will take second. Well, that's big with Castro at the plate who hits the bell on the ground uh, so often. Deal John Lackey signed you know, with Boston years ago. Included a health clause, which kicked in. He missed the 2012 season after elbow reconstruction. So the club option year this year became available to his team, which is now the Cardinals, which is at the major league minimum. Swing and a miss, it's one and two. Before you start feeling bad for John Lackey, he made at least $10 million each of the last six seasons, including 18 7 in 2010, almost 16 million in 2011. Didn't pitch that one year, but still made over 15 million. And this year, a half a million. His checks will probably look really small in comparison this season. Hoglin thought about it, but he's not going to yeah. test Molina. Goes home at night. So, honey, we got to cut back. <laughs> Not go out to eat quite as often as we normally do. Maybe fly coach every once in a while. The end of the bat on the ground to Peralta. And he gets Castro. Conklin remaining at second. And let's take a look ahead. The Cubs forward upcoming schedule. Got two more night games here. An off day in New York on Monday. And then Cubs and Mets. That's making an announcement today. They're going to work with a six man rotation to try to protect their young arms. It's a look inside Ballpark Village and across the street. Here's Mike Baxter with two outs. Inside ball one. Lackey will max out at around 95 miles an hour with a fastball. He doesn't get there very often. Typically works 91 to 93. Looks like he's got pretty good zip here tonight. He'll throw a lot of fastballs. He's not shy. From Abilene, Texas, Grayson County College and University of Texas at Arlington. Drafted way back in 1999, second rounder of the Angels. 158 and 121 his career. One loss record with an ERA right at four. No active pitcher has thrown more postseason innings in his 117. Peralta makes a catch to end the inning. Inning and a half in. Scoreless.
Cubs very much in the playoff mix in the National League. It's not been a particularly friendly place to the Cubs. 34 and 49 here at Bush Stadium. Which opened in 2006. Did you know this is technically Bush Stadium 3? Yes. Sportsman Park yep. was renamed Bush Stadium 1953 and then Bush 2 opened in 1966. Yep. It's like the whole presidential thing. Uh, Jeb looking to be Bush 3. Yep. Three stadiums and three presidents. Two strikes on Jason Hayward. Bill DeWitt, the owner of the Cardinals. It's uh, been a tough time here. I mean, look, the Cardinals 48 24, but dealing with the, the hacking allegations regarding the Astros. They've had their injuries. Saw so Adam Wainwright earlier today. He actually thinks there's a sliver of a chance he could be back this season. They had the tragic car accident that killed Oscar Tavares in the offseason, which. That's why they went out and got Jason Hayward. There's John Mozalock, their GM, but it has not affected negatively their play on the field at all. No, nor would you think that, that, that certainly that hacking scandal really wouldn't be anything that would work its way into the clubhouse. Nobody would really be all that concerned about it down there. Investigation is ongoing, and ultimately, there'll probably be some discipline. The degree uh, to which the Cardinals will be punished, we have no idea right now. We don't know all the details. 2 0 on Yadier Molina, who didn't hit his first home run until fairly recently, June 15th. That was last week against the Twins. And he's got two now, and batting 382 since he hit that first homer. Yeah average has been uh, climbing he's been swinging it pretty well lately not driving the ball not a lot of extra base hits 12 doubles to go along with those two home runs on the year. The numbers are steadily improving for the veteran Molina. A couple of, uh, former Cubs Bill Miller. John Mabry Mabry the hitting coach Bill Miller. The assistant hitting coach. Molina playing in his 145th career game against the Cubs. He's batted 309 with 13 home runs. And a lot of those hits, big ones. So you check out the Cubs blog on ABC7.com brought to you by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide agent serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff. JeffVuk.com nationwide is on your side. Shade Molina a little bit towards right and then right center in the outfield. He hits a lot of balls in that area. You just continue to work middle away on Molina. You're doing him a favor. Every now and then he'll he'll look fastball in and he'll ambush you and, and, and jerk one. But um, he, like many hitters, are looking for the ball out away from him. Curveball almost hit him. And it's three and two. Randall Gritchick is on deck. Ball four. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Here's Gritchick. Well, that's the other thing that the depth this team has shown. Matt Holiday has a screen right quad. 
We might see him at Wrigley Field in a couple of weeks before the break. They just uh, keep on keeping on, even with Holiday out, uh, Matt Adams, spring quad as well. Eighth inning guy, Jordan Walden. Biceps injury, we mentioned Wainwright. We just got Lance Lynn back in the DL, and he was very good last night in a win at Miami. Yeah, Jaime Garcia. Been battling injury for the last couple of years. He's back pitching very well. And that's the thing that you know, you know, they've got a number of guys that contribute obviously offensively, but the pitching has really led the way for this club. They've got the best ERA in the game. Starters are really good. The bullpen has been outstanding. They have the top save percentage in the National League. Two and all the count. Arietta's pitch driven out toward the alley. That's trouble. It's going to get to the wall. Molina on his way to third. Jose Okendo is going to send him. Relay throw late and is cut off by Rizzo. An RBI triple for Randall Gritchett. Yeah, you look for sure that Molina was going to be able to score on that ball. The question was would they be able to have a play on Gritchett, keep him off third base with one out? Here's your answer. He's standing there 90 feet away from home plate, a 2-0 fastball, middle of the plate, thigh high. Richard struggled a little bit when he first came to the big leagues, but they really like his bat. He's a strong kid, very athletic. Kendo racing down the line with Molina, a la, a la Tim Flannery. Five triples now for Gritchick. Infield in the second straight inning, and John Jay fouls back. Got the pitcher Lackey on deck. Nice to get a, a really good long start from Arietta tonight. The bullpen has been so good lately, you don't want to jeopardize that for a couple of reasons. You can only get four innings out of John Lester yesterday, and you're going to have a fill in starter tomorrow night. And Dion will have more on Don Roach, who will spell Suyoshi Wada tomorrow night, and a little later on. Jay swings and misses. Gritchick ran down the line like it was going to be a suicide squeeze, and that forced all four infielders to. To come in a step well, or two. I thought I heard somebody yell squeeze. I don't know if it came from the dugout or one of the infielders. Some excited fan, but I heard somebody yell. It was either squeeze or hot dog, please. But I heard it. Runner trying to score Rizzo to Montero out again. The Gritchick nailed. Yeah, and that's a no brainer send there with the pitcher coming up next. You don't read that ball off the bat. You just go on contact and hope for the best. Gritchick is a little bit lacking as he didn't have a very aggressive lead down the third base line. He could have been a little bit more daring with his start, but another very good play by an infielder. First Castro throws one out at home and now Rizzo to Montero to get Gritchick. Good job both times by the catcher to make sure he was not in that running lane before the ball arrived. One and oh on the pitcher Lackey. Letting everybody know, yes, I know I'm taking here. Wow. So whatever you do, don't walk the pitcher. When you go three and oh, you start trying to goose it up there a little bit, you cut it off.
off your uh, Fourth of July weekend at Wrigley Field, starting with the Budweiser Bleacher of Friday's Red, White, and Brew celebration on July 3rd. The Marlins are in town. All Budweiser Bleacher fans, 21 and older, can soak up the sun in their new Patriotic Cubs tank while enjoying lively summer hits, patriotic music, along with classic American fare. Tickets are still available at Cubs.com. A little blue and a sea of red. So Arietta walking the pitcher now has to face Wong, who doubled to start the bottom of the first. By the way, the uh, Phillies got a hit in the sixth inning, so Johnny Vandermeer's record remains intact. The Nationals and Max Scherzer still have a five-nothing lead. They play the seventh. This Basio not happy with what he sees from Marietta here. Maybe pitch selection, maybe something mechanical, maybe just a chance to reset and refocus. So now Wong, you got to be careful with him. He's not a real big guy, but he's got legitimate pop. He's hit nine home runs this year. Four pitch walk to the pitcher. Sometimes you're inclined to just start. All right, here it is. Throw it in there. You can't really do that with Wong. Still make quality pitches. Hmm. Got a break. Wild swing at a changeup. One and two. Team leading 34th start in the leadoff spot. For Colton Wong. National League second baseman with nine home runs. Swing and a miss. So whatever Chris Basio said, it worked. Cardinals get on the board first. One nothing. C7 Eyewitness News in the morning, weekdays 4:30 to 7 a.m. with Judy Sue and Terrell Brown. 
Comes two and four against the first place Cardinals. Joe Madden talking about this series. When you're playing them heads up, you definitely want to make some noise, but I do not want our guys to approach it any differently. Don't want them to think they have to play any harder, any better. Just go play. Do simple better. He's got a T-shirt that he wears that says that. He's a very intellectual guy. He you know, loves to learn new things and soak up knowledge, but at the, the heart of it, he really tries to make this game and life in the game as simple as possible. Yeah, he's got a very refreshing attitude. Um, some, some managers burn out because they just can't live with the losses. You know, you hear, you hear that a lot from managers. I, I, I hated the losses way more than I enjoy the wins. I don't think that applies to Matt. I think Joe's able to turn the page on a tough loss more quickly and a lot easier than a lot of managers. Popped up by Jake. And this ball comes down. He'll be 0 for 28. In the season, Reynolds makes a catch. Celebrate the 4th of July weekend at the friendly confines. The Cubs play the Marlins over the three day weekend. There's the red, white, and brew themed bleacher fun on Friday, followed by the first ever post game fireworks uh, after the game on Saturday. And as always, a family fun on kids' Sundays, which include the running the bases after the game. Cubs.com for tickets. Cubs had their first hit. It's Addison Russell. First pitch swinging. And he's aboard for Dexter Fowler. We uh, briefly asked Dexter how he's feeling. He's not quite 100% with the ankle. As we check out Russell's hit through the hole in the left. On that Gritchick triple, it looked like Dexter was still maybe not going all out. And I think it has to do with that ankle more than anything. A strike. Yeah, and uh, talking with Joe earlier this morning, I ran into him. He said he didn't know if Dexter was going to be able to play today. And then later on in the morning, Dexter sent him a text that I'm good to go, Skip. I don't know if I would. I'm, I'm glad I didn't play in the uh, in the cell phone era. Why is that? Few, I don't. You might have fired off a few texts to the manager that you regret later on. Or <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's best just to respond yeah. to the manager as yeah. opposed to send them the, "Hey, I'm in there tonight, right?" Dot dot dot. Laying there, the emoji it's smiley three face. Three o'clock in the morning after a tough start. Why did you pull me? I'd only given up seven runs. You don't want to drunk text the uh, manager. That's a bad idea. Or anger text him. <laughs> Pretty good lead by Russell at first. Molina continues to be a weapon behind home plate in terms of throwing out base runners. Maybe not quite as. Good as he once was, but still well above average. Many catchers, the veteran guys, right? The, the, the reputation counts, and it goes both ways. If you have a guy who historically does not throw out runners and has one good year, I think teams generally will still run on you. And I think the reverse works too. You have a reputation for a guy who throws out a lot of people, but you're not having a great year, they're probably still not going to run as much as they would against somebody else.
And so much of it obviously depends on whether the pitcher gives the catcher a chance. That's the first part of the equation. But when given a chance, Molina has been as good as anybody over the last ten years or so since Pud Rodriguez left the game. So looks like he wants to go. He's not going though on the three-two and Fowler. Strikes out for the second time. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is being brought to you by Disney Pixar's comedy adventure Inside Out from the creators of Up. Meet the little voices inside your head in 3D now playing. Are the voices inside your head in HD or 3D? Mm. You dream in black and white, I know that. Really? That's what they say, yeah. I didn't know that. Long playing back in the grass in shallow right against Rizzo. Oh, he just got hit. It looked like it really stung. That is the 30th time he's been hit since the start of 2014. I think he got him in the back arm. Nope. In the lead arm. See now, if he's in his two strike approach there, he's not using that bigger leg kick, he may be able to turn out of the way of that one, but at the time he was loading up looking to do some damage. So that ties his career high. He got hit 15 times last year in 140 games. About half those games, he's been hit 15 times this season. Chris Bryant, aggressive swing as he fouls off. Two on, two down, single and a hit batter here in the third inning. Lackey steps off. Lackey has allowed uh, just seven home runs this year, only two to right handed batters. Of opinion, perhaps, on how they want to try to get Brian. There's no place like home for John Lackey. 12 starts in this ballpark, 7 and 1 with a 204. 5 and 1, 181 this year. Obviously, strides out to that mound, feeling pretty good about things. He has started and won two World Series clinchers. And neither with the Cardinals. One was with the Angels, the other with the Red Sox. Well, he has shown a willingness to pitch inside with action, good lively heater, up and in. The slider away. Well, you've established that not, not so much the inside corner, but the willingness to pitch up and in early in the ball game. That that'll stay with those hitters all night long. Less likely to dive to cover the outside corner. You see our pitch tracks from Xfinity. That one well off the outside corner and down. Two two on its way and Bryant 
went around. He thought he had held up. In fact, he was getting ready for the next pitch. But Adrian Johnson rings him up from first base. And that will end the inning. You be the judge. One nothing Cardinals. Kevin is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Check out our exciting model lineup by visiting your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer or visit us today at mbusa.com. So glad you're with us tonight to kick off this Cubs Cardinals weekend. Jake Arrieta, his former TCU teammate Matt Carpenter. Carpenter Dealt with some back tightness earlier this week and in May he missed four games due to extreme fatigue. Dealing with dehydration, some dizziness, accelerated heart rate. He said it, it was self inflicted and he's got a bit of a football mentality, so I don't know if he's changed any pre game or between game routines as a result. Yeah, the last time we saw him, I thought he looked like he dropped some weights. Not a real big guy. He is a line drive machine. Second highest line drive rate in the National League. Behind Brandon Belt. It makes sense that a guy named Belt will hit a lot of line drives. And the other thing that Carpenter doesn't do is he doesn't. Chase pitches out of the zone very often, as a matter of fact. Only Curtis Granderson of the Mets is more discerning than Carpenter in that regard. We'll see Granderson next week. The Grandy Man. He was part of this six game trip. So you got to throw it in there to get Carpenter. That's the bottom line. Madden and his top lieutenant Dave Martinez. Deep center. Fowler going back on it to the warning track and he makes the play. Hey. 
Hey, coming up Sunday, July the 5th, the Cubs will host the Miami Marlins at 120 in the first 5,000 kids in attendance. We'll get an Anthony Rizzo life size fabric growth chart presented by ATI Physical Therapy. Then after the game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 and younger with wristbands, will be allowed on the field to run the bases, weather permitting. For more info, Cubs.com. One and zero on Johnny Peralta. One hundred twenty-two pitches for Arietta last time out in that complete game shutout of the Twins. Eighty-six of those pitches were strikes. It was masterful. Listening in a few more curveballs here tonight. It was timely as well because the uh, following evening, uh, Suyoshi Wada got pulled after just two innings due to injury. And as I said before, as lights out as his bullpen has been, part of the deal is the starters helping them out, not stretching them too thin. As Bryant will charge and get Peralta. Watch Chicago's number one news, ABC 7 Eyewitness News, weeknights at 10 with Ron Majors, Kathy Brock, Cheryl Burton, Jerry Taft, and Mark Giangreco. A hard hit lineup right there. Reynolds flying to right. First time. Cutting a miss over top a curveball. Let's game planning or just if Jake feels better with that pitch tonight. Seems like he's mixing a few more of those in than he normally does. It's Typically it's 95 96 mile an hour heaters he'll sink it. Of course that hard cutter. When, when, it, when he's got that pitch going that thing moves like a hummingbird it's just there and then. Off she goes. Occasional change up to the left handed hitter. He got him. Reynolds caught looking. And that'll put a wrap on the inning.
standings brought to you by the Bob Le Corsio Auto Group. Looks like a runaway, but we still have a long way to go. Pirates hosting the Braves. They're tied at two in the seventh. Pirates lost in extras to the Reds last night. One nothing St. Louis. Here's the thing. Mm. The Cubs pitching staff. Since June 10th. Has a 254 earned run average, third in the majors. You know who's ahead of them? The Cardinals and, Louis. and the Pirates. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, Cubs have been playing pretty good for a good long while now, but really haven't been able to gain any ground. Cardinals have a 267 team ERA. That was coming in. The Pirates are 292. No team has put up a sub three ERA over a full season since the Dodgers had a 295 in 1989. That's Derek Lilliquist, their pitching coach. Two balls, two strikes well, to Montero. There are currently 11 pitchers in the National League with sub three ERAs. And the Cardinals have three of them. Lynn. Waka and the youngster Carlos Martinez. Waka will pitch tomorrow night. And will not get the Wada Waka matchup. No. Waka and then uh, Martinez will go Sunday. Wada will be skipped at this point. The Cubs do not anticipate a DL stint for Suyoshi, so likely a reliever. Will be sent out to make room for Don Roach. That's tomorrow. Tonight, it's one nothing St. Louis, three two on Montero. Coglin next. Cubs with just one hit so far in the ballpark. Or ballpark ball game. Well, only one hit in the ballpark. Park in the ballpark as well. And didn't get a whole lot done offensively in that series against the Dodgers. But that's you know when you face. Top pitching teams in the game, it's tough to score runs. And depending on the matchups in New York, it might not get a whole lot easier over there. Well, has been a uh, patient guy here in June, leading the league, and seeing pitches. And walks. It starts. Hey, watch the show everyone in Chicago is talking about. Chicago's most watched local talk show, Windy City Live, weekdays at 11, only on ABC7. Music makes you want to snap your fingers, doesn't it? Makes me want to ride a bicycle on a spring day. And say, hi, neighbor. What's the name of your puppy? I don't have a puppy. <laughs> Here's Coughlin. He walked in the second. Stream of consciousness, Jim Deshays. I like it. <laughs> he asked me what it, what, it, what it made me think of, and that's it came to mind. I like was in a television commercial. Carpenter in at third. Double play depth up the middle. Reynolds holding on the runner. Montero. He's straight up in the outfield. And popped up. Behind third base, it's Carpenter to make the catch. So uh, last time we saw Lackey, he was quite good too, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah. Figured him out. He's been quite good pretty much all year. Um, last four or five starts, he's been outstanding. He had one bad one, and that was in Denver. And that's you know we were talking about that yesterday. How many pitchers? Uh, in the game, would you ask that your worst start of the year, perhaps your career, where did it happen? And a good number of them are going to say up there in Denver. So he had a game up there where he allowed 10 runs, eight earned, and about four innings of work. If you, if you throw that one out, he'd have a 273 ERA for the season. 
opposed to the 341 he came in with. Yeah, interestingly, his career ERA had gone under four for the first time in four seasons. And then he had that start. And he had to start, his next start had to be there. Yeah. Ball, no strikes to Castro. Montero runs. Castro rolls it right where Wong had been. And Montero will head to third. That's the way to do it. Perfectly executed hit and yeah. run. Well, Branch Ricky, I think they said nothing more beautiful than a perfectly executed hit and run play. Castro hit so many ground balls on the left side of the infield. Well, you knew they're going to keep the shortstop home. Uh, Wong breaks early, opens up that hole on the right side, and Castro does indeed push it through into right center field. Montero able to scoot to third and a golden opportunity here. Or at least a silver opportunity yeah. because you got the pitcher on deck. The key man now is Baxter with Arietta. On deck, and this is where Lackey pull out all that uh, veteran experience here. I think he would feel like it's the end of the world if he walks back. Still, though, Mike swings at the first pitch. It was a curveball, base hit, and we're tied. RBI single, Mike Baxter. It's 1 1 in the fourth. Lead off walk comes around to Mike Lackey. Hit and run play, and then a solid single for Baxter, and the Cubs are on the board. A little spiked curveball. A little get over curveball, but Baxter ready to hit. Bunted by Arietta, and he's the second Cub pitcher to get down a sack bunt this year. That'll go one to four. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night they happen all in one place. Don't miss the 86 All Star game. Coverage begins at 6 Central Tuesday, July 14th. Cast your vote for your favorite Cubs players at Cubs.com. Strike on Addison Russell. So I asked Addison today what. Give me something about the big leagues that is different and not just the obvious everybody's better and the game's faster. He talked about the amount of prep before the game. How much video the scouting reports you're allowed to and encouraged to study and how much they know about you. Very few secrets at this level. Mm hmm. Thought that was a very good answer. Yeah, yeah. Because I, you know, I don't know. I haven't been around the minor league scene for a long time. But you know, back in the day, there was no information really about the other club other than what you had gleaned by playing them earlier in the year. Now I imagine there are some reports that they have access to. Nothing like they do here at the big league level. Well, the other thing I wonder. At the minor league level, especially the lower minor leagues, uh, how is how important uh, this, how important are scouting reports anyway? Because when you're kind of evaluating talent, don't you just want to, in some ways, roll the balls out there and just go play? Let's go play. Let's see who's good and who's not. Yeah, and, and from the pitching standpoint, there's probably a lot of guys in the lower minor leagues that couldn't execute the game plan anyway. <laughs> Two and two. But you're right. I think you know, and you know if, if you're a development guy and, and you want to see your players work their way up through the system, I think you would you would like to turn them loose and let let them figure it out on their own for a while and see who has that ability. 
You only put a guy in favorable situations. Maybe stunting his development a bit. I fly right field. It's going to be in foul territory, and it's also going to make the seats. Big situation here. Molina and Lackey, the veterans, want to talk it over. Molina has very strong opinions as to what he wants to do. Uh, Lackey is a strong willed guy. We're pitching to Molina, I would be inclined to defer to him more times than not. And a big two out RBIs for Addison Russell this year. Good take. Joe Madden just said make him stop. That was a little bit of a quick pitch there from Lackey. I think the manager and the bench coach have more fun than anybody on the team. You might be right. Ball four. Here comes Fowler. By Castro to get back to third. He drifting in that situation. These guys are going to run out of timeouts. Not too long ago, Dexter Fowler had a grand slam in Minnesota. Might have been his last at bat with the bases loaded for all we know. It was Sunday. Yep. Just saying. Sounds like he broke his bat as he lines to Colton Wong. Cubs tie it on the Baxter single. It's 1 1. Strong like the Hulk is brought to you by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. One one comes in cards. <laughs> Curve 
ball strike on Jason Hayward. Hayward very aggressive. His first at bat went up there hacking, uh, ultimately grounded out to first base. Just sometimes you just tell by a hitter's body language how he's feeling in the batter's box. He's, he's very hitterish. And he's been on a very nice roll. You know, he gained a reputation early in his career in Atlanta being a great defender, very patient hitter. And they thought the power would emerge, and he's shown flashes of it. Still only 25 years old. Yeah, he turns 26 in August. He'll be a free agent after the season. His OPS, his batting average, rising month to month, hitting 338 in June. He's got an eight game hitting streak. Recently had a three game home run streak. Two and two. He's good. Uh, down and in. He's also a good middle away and up. I think you can go down and away and then jam him. This is with Arietta stuff. This is the fastball for Jake's third strikeout. Molina, he walked and scored in the second. Scherzer's done. Eight innings tonight, five hits, two runs, no walks, seven strikeouts. Leading five to two at Philadelphia. That's pretty good. And he's got a six game hitting streak. Nationals poised to win their seventh in a row. Molina on his way to first. Arietta will throw him out. Mad Max has been on quite a roll, has he not? One hitter at Milwaukee. Struck out 16 in that ball game, then the no no against the Pirates. Rather pedestrian outing tonight for him, eight innings of five hit, two run baseball. Uh, in that stretch, he went 54 batters between hits. It's, uh, 26 innings, six hits, two runs, one walk. Final strike on Gritchick. Jake making his eighth start against the Cardinals, three and one with a one five one earned run average. Third time he's faced them this season. First start of the year was against the Cardinals back at Wrigley. Seven shutout in that ball game. Swing and a miss to end the inning. Anthony Rizzo will lead off the Cubs fifth when we return.
DeVry University. The category tonight is doubles. Anthony Rizzo leads the way with 23. You see Matt Carpenter also on that list. That's why we're looking at doubles tonight because two of those guys are in this game. That's called quality television right there, baby. Five of the six are left-handed hitters. Rizzo swings and sends one out into very deep left center. That ball slicing, and it's going to be run down by Gritchick. That slice spin took a little steam out of that drive by Rizzo. You know he wanted to inflict some damage on Lackey after getting drilled by a heater last time up. As Dion pointed out earlier, uh, Ryan struck out three times against Lackey last time they squared off twice so far here tonight. And a walk and five strikeouts uh, for Bryant against Lackey. Good slider. This is your uh, rookie rankings for Chris Bryant. And uh, that. With him missing the first eight games while playing at triple A. For the hole, backhanded play Peralta. The throw is late. Bryant beats it out for an infield hit. When that, that rollover swing like that hitter usually gets a good break out of the box. And we've talked a lot about Bryant's speed, above average runner. Sniffing that hit. Pushing it down the line. Montero 0 for 1 with a walk. And the Cubs run back just one inning to go in the fourth. Inside for a ball. Got a game that's over already. I bet you could guess who pitched. Mark Burley. Toronto beat Texas 12 to 2. He's now 8 and 4. Noah Syndergaard also beat Johnny Cueto. Mets over the Reds 2 to 1. That game already over. That's a heck of a matchup there. In the uh, the Toronto Texas game, Prince Fielder hit a home run. His 300th, so. He joins his dad in the 300 former club. And the fielders join the Bonds as the only father son duos to do that. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced. Or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated. Without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. So there. Don't even think about it. Three and one. I remember as a kid uh, putting a little tape recorder in front of the television. For uh, it was Kurt Gowdy doing the call of Hank Aaron's 714 or 715. I was a little worried that the feds might come storming the door because I was <laughs> taping that game. There goes Bryant. Montero swings and misses. The throw is high, but Bryant came off the bag. And Peralta tags him out. Carried too much speed into the turn. Well, he would have had a stolen base. You got fast dirt here in St. Louis. And a game of tag there that he ultimately lost. And 
Meantime, three and two on Montero, and we'll do it again. Is that Wong or uh, Peralta who took that throw? Peralta. In case we get graded on our scorecards yep. after the game, I want to make sure I'm accurate. Wind in the pitch spoiled again. A little bit of a lazy breaking ball there from Lackey. Lined in the right. Second hit of the inning. And it's Coughlin. Tried to cut a fastball in on him. Montero wouldn't let him in. Seems to me that the uh, batting average after caught stealing is higher than it normally would be. I mean league wide? Yeah, just over all the years, it just seems to me that. After caught stealing, that next guy reaches oh, I see beyond what, what his, you know, the normal batting average or on base percentage would be. That one Maybe really stung. Where did get him? Hmm. You know, good, good folks from Saber that are in Chicago would be able to look that up. Right. That's where I got him. Okay. Anyway, uh, thanks to the fine folks at the Society for American yes. Baseball yeah. Research. We uh, had a good time there yesterday. You and I and Ron Coomer did a, a broadcaster's panel with Kurt Smith, the author. And, uh, we mm -hmm. had a real good time. Kurt Smith has written books on baseball broadcasting. He's a professor at the University of Rochester. Uh, used to be a speechwriter for President Reagan or uh, Bush Sr., one of those guys. Big group gathered in Chicago through the weekend. If you like to talk baseball, you should work your way down there and join them. All kinds of great panel discussions, a big memorabilia show going on as well. By the way, if a guy fouls one off his toe, or is he bounces back up and hits him in the elbow or something. And they wait for a minute or so. Everybody looks concerned. But when you do that, you look around the diamond, and guys can barely us. hold their laughter. Yeah, yeah right it seems mean. Yeah, that's why it's uh, it's, it's like uh, every bad slapstick comedy. There's always one, one shot. Foul. It's like script writers like we need to get a laugh in here somewhere. I don't know. That's just I don't know if somebody get hit in the groin. It's always good for a chuckle. Yeah, Chris Coglin has the longest active games played streak in the majors. Okay, so Coglin in his first plate appearance worked to count full. Took, I believe it was a slider down and in for ball four. So we'll see if that causes Lackey to be a little bit more aggressive in this situation. Coglin can take advantage if he gets a a challenge fastball here on three two. Terrell runs with two outs. That ball hit hard, but foul. Had a breaking ball, but it was up a little bit. I don't think Reynolds touched that ball, and had he touched it in foul territory, it would have been foul. It landed foul. Now, had he touched it while it was still fair, it would have been fair.
A lot of times you'll have your first baseman play behind the runner there. Montero on his way to third. Three hits in the inning. Still trying to get that go ahead run. Another good at bat for Coglin. Did get a pitch in the zone. I think you know, the, the ability to just to, to, to show that you're willing to take the walk. Great benefits, obviously, because you get on base, but down the road. Back to back two out hits after Bryant was caught stealing over sliding second. He's come up with some big RBIs here lately. Some game enders at Wrigley Field, some game winners on the road. He held that ball a good long while and it's hard for a hitter to maintain concentration for that long so Castro asked for time got it from Jim Wolf. Mackey went quickly that time before Molina had really set up. Hopping out to cover the outside corner was in mid hop as Lackey was delivering that pitch. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. Cubs get three hits and no runs. Seven is being brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports.
by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. Packed house here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Cubs and Cardinals opening up a three game weekend. Eight, nine, and one for the home team. John Jay slices one foul to left. Out of play. A 1 1 tie. Cardinals 26 and 7 in this ballpark. 41 and 15 against right handers. Cubs actually have the sixth best record against righties, 33 and 28. I believe that was a strike, but because Montero had to reach for it, he didn't get the call. Um, how about that? Best 33 game mark since 1887. Ground ball in the center and a base hit. The first base runner for the Cardinals post Chris Bazio. Remember, Bazio went yeah. to the mound after the lackey walk and he started long, ball one or ball two. Boz went out there and he quickly dispatched Wong and not allowed a base runner. And uh, Jake Arietta has not needed a lot of help to shut down this Cardinal lineup. This is the eighth time he's gone to the post against them and three and one with a 1 5 1 ERA in the previous seven. Jake was born in Missouri, went to high school in Texas. Plano East High School in Plano. P L A N O, Plano. Not plain old, but you might hear down in Texas. You might hear somebody says, Plain old Texas. Weatherford College and then Texas Christian University. One and one to Lackey. Maybe not really a base stealer, but Anthony Rizzo has to be mindful if he leaves a little too soon. Like Matheny may play a little button run. Gives Jay a big head start here. The uh, breeze has picked up a bit. Call oh, strike three. It's Finley pitch tracks. Darting cutter for strike three. Occasionally try to bunt for a hit for that reason. Bryant was tightened up a little bit at third base. Strike one. Bryant will back off a little bit, even with the bag. Pinching in the middle, playing for two. Have six hits, the Cardinals just three. But what really matters is it's one one on the run board. Up and in one and two. 
Cardinals have to be very happy with the production they've gotten from the middle of their infield. Long and Peralta. Both been terrific. Combined for 20 home runs, 74 driven in. Both hitting for a high average. Beat him with a high heater last time. So they're going to try it again. Nope. Swing and a miss, strike three. A little deep by Montero. Initially flashed the glove up and then set up outside for this backdoor breaking ball. Time now for out of town scoreboard brought to you by Jeep. Braves trying to get that game into extras. A couple of men on two outs for the Pirates. You mentioned the Mets bested the Reds and the Brewers all over the Twins tonight, 10 to 2 in the fifth. White Sox lost in Detroit on an eighth inning. J.D. Martinez home run, 5 4 oh, Tigers the final. Goodness, what a tear he is on. Homers in that game. Eaton, Abreu, Flowers for the White Sox. Davis and Martinez, seventh and the eighth game tire game winner for Detroit. 2 0 oh to Carpenter. Three games in a row with a home run for Martinez, eight in his last ten. And a three home run game against the uh, Yankees a few days back on Father's Day, as a matter of fact. Two for Carpenter today. He's hit five home runs off the Cubs more than any other team. Eight home runs on the year for him this year. More as a line drive, doubles, high average guy. Three and one. You know, there's a uh, Twitter handle. Dedicated to you? No. I just found it, yeah. Not to Shay's quotes. Your growing comment prompted a tweet. <laughs> I bet it did. Yeah. Fouled off. On Friday, uh, September 11th, the Zach Brown Band is coming back to Wrigley Field for their Jekyll and Hyde tour. Tickets are on sale now at Cubs.com slash Zach Brown Band. Don't miss your chance to see this uh, three-time Grammy Award-winning band. Tickets available Cubs.com slash Zach Brown Band. Full count on the hitter, Carpenter. Jay will take off with the pitch because there are two outs. Play a little peekaboo with him there. Try to keep him honest. Tighten him up a little bit. Not getting into it here. And this action pitch from Arietta. And it's popped into center field. Dexter Fowler coming on. Winning over. Five in the books. 1-1. One, one.
Series drive of the game. It was courtesy of Mike Baxter. RBI single to tie it up in the fourth. Yeah, we talked in the uh, early in the ball game with our Mercedes keys of the game about being ready to hit that. Hockey throws a lot of first pitch strikes. Baxter was ready for that first pitch curveball and delivered a run scoring single. And after a really nice hit run play executed by Montero and Castro. Ball one for Baxter. This is his sixth start, all coming in the last 12 games. Jorge Soler on the DL, golfed high in the air to center. And it would be John Jay to gather it in. Sure you check out first alert weather only on ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Third tap, Cheryl Scott. Only on ABC Eyewitness News. Jake Arietta snaps the offer. He was nothing out of 28 on the season before that base hit. Sacrifice button down last time up. Solid single this time. Cubs have had base runners in every inning except the first. A lot of traffic, but only one point so far. Russell has reached both times. This time he's going to hit into a 6 3 double play. And the Cubs are done in the sixth inning in a 1 1 tie. Winning here at Bush Stadium, 1-1 game between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Great pitching matchup tonight. Interesting one tomorrow as Cubs right-handed call of Don Roach makes his season debut in place of the injured Tayoshi Wada. Roach 7-1 in AAA Iowa. Does have one major league start under his belt, but certainly not on this stage. Joe Madden told him, just relax, be yourself. And that's what Roach will try to do. We did ask Madden why he didn't choose to go with a pitcher already here. Say, pull Travis Wood out of the bullpen. He said, no, I like the way our bullpen is. And guys, why not? Cubs relievers right now a 1.45 ERA over the last month. That's the lowest in baseball, Len. Thanks, Dion. Yeah, he likes Travis Wood as a reliever right now. And Roach will make his second major league start. 16 appearances with the Padres last year. 
and the Las Vegas native to face the Cardinals tomorrow as Travis has his feet up right now because Jake Arrieta is dealing. Peralta down the right field line long run Mike Baxter foul territory takes a look and he's got it. What a catch. How about that. Mr. Baxter with the RBI and now a tremendous play out in right field. Quite as dramatic as the play made in the Johan Santana no hitter for the Mets when he ended up on the DL but uh, that's a really nice yeah, play. That wall is at a difficult height. You know, it's just right there about mid thigh where it's very easy to flip into the stands. Great concentration by Baxter. Well, we were uh, chatting with Mike today about the injuries he suffered. Crashing into the wall in New York, helping out Johan Santana and the only no hitter in Mets history. And he grew up a Mets fan. And, well, all kinds of damage done right behind his sternum, his chest area. He slammed his left shoulder into the wall. He ended up missing a couple of months. And he was thrilled that Santana completed the no-no. If you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna give up the body <laughs> like that. You hope the guy gets the no-no, and yeah. Santana did. One one on Mark Reynolds. Yes, he he did. Pitch number eighty four on the night. Bounce back to the mound. He's got the strut going tonight, yeah, now, doesn't he's, he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's been getting stronger man, yep. as these starts have moved along, particularly his last appearance at Minnesota. And he finished that one. Drop a points on us. Uh -huh. You did. Yeah. We always get feedback from people who say it's it's runs, not points. <laughs> they don't realize that that's inside baseball. A lot of guys in, in the clubhouse they say points because it's not points. That's that that is the point. Yeah. Points. You gotta mix it up We're, every we once can in say a while. goals. Was awkward looking. Mm -hmm. Well, he can do that. He is. You know, his stuff is so good. He can do some ugly swings, even from a guy who was then red hot. That lane changer, producing a pretty ugly swing from Hayward. My heater got him last time. Here, high heater. I think of the high heater that got the late Ron Santo in the visiting radio booth <laughs> in New York, Shea Stadium, about 10 years ago or so. He stood up and they got they had the heater there above your head and his toupee caught on fire. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it throws some heat too. <laughs> Good. Obviously. Boy, some bats have been broken tonight by Jake Arietta as he. Gets Hayward on a rollout to his second, and as we roll out, we'll see Chris Bryant in the seventh.
Lottery anything's possible moment of the game Mike Baxter. J.D. would say get both feet in bounds. Giving up the body. Every winning story starts with a ticket. What will yours be? Illinois lottery. Anything's possible. It's getting late. We're in the seventh inning. And the fourth time through the order for John Lackey. Yeah, I would think the Cubs would be poised to inflict a little damage on Lackey here. Pretty resourceful, though, this guy. Hit well on the move. Jay can't get it. Fowler on his way to second, and he's got a double. Might be a triple if he's 100% with the ankle, but Cubs will definitely take it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad ankle double right there. Otherwise, I think Fowler is standing on third base, but a great swing of the bat as he gets his fourth look at Lackey. Last time, a little broken bat liner with the bases loaded in the fourth that Wong made a nice play on. Jay not able to run this one down, and you see that Fowler has to drop anchor and Sell for a leadoff double. Marietta saying, Give me that one, boys. We'll be in pretty good shape. So Carpenter's playing in at third. With Rizzo at the plate. No foul. Yeah, I think, you know, Rizzo. Never hits the ball on the ground over there. So I'm sure what they're thinking is, well, it's just, just in case if we stay back, he would think about trying to push a bunt over there. We'll just take that option away from him. I mean, Peralta is playing strong pull, so he's closer to second base. That will get Fowler to third as Reynolds will step on first. See if Bryant can get him in. Cardinals have double barrel action in their bullpen. Infield coming in. Now I think that arm is still hurting for Anthony where he got hit early in the game. Yeah, he had an he's uncomfortable kind of looking grimace, yeah, reaction to after his first swing. Pretty good bruise on there. I think may have stiffened up on him. Here we go, and a swing and a miss. Randy Choate, Seth Manus. Manus is the ground ball guy. Choate is the loogie. Lefty one out guy. In the air, Fowler ready to tag. That should be plenty deep enough. Jay trying to get behind it. In fact, he's not even. Gonna worry about it. Cubs take the lead on the sacrifice fly. Chris Bryant makes it two to one. Job well done by Bryant. They cash in that leadoff double. Let's go back to Anthony Rizzo's at bat. That was the first swing of that at bat. Yeah. It like it hurt. You cash it in. Get him over, get him in. Stretch time here in St. Louis. Cubs lead for the first time tonight. It's two to one.
Fan cam. America runs on Duncan. Dexter Fowler lead off double and scored eventually on the Chris Bryant sacrifice fly. And the Cubs lead this one two to one. Pirates just beat the Braves in the 10th inning on a Jordy Mercer game ending RBI double. It was off Jason Grilly, former Pirate. Molina swings and misses. Marietta still throwing hard, 94 on his 90th pitch. It's one base runner for the Cardinals since the second inning. Oh and two now. We focus so much on pitch counts, and Arietta threw 122 pitches last time out. Mostly is thrown in a ball game this year. No ill effects at all here this evening. You know, we we have commented on Jake's uh, workout habits. He is very meticulous. Between starts and his off-season conditioning, he, he rarely looks like he's breathing hard. And I, I think some of that comes back to his balance. There doesn't seem to be much wasted effort, does there? No, he's not a max max effort guy. And you know, when you pitch a complete game shutout as he did last time out, obviously he was out there for all 27 outs, but there was not a lot of high-stress pitches. They just didn't put that many men on base against him. Four hits, no walks. Been pretty clean here tonight as well. Kevin Segrist in the home bullpen. He got him on a curveball. For seven for Arietta. Working all around the edges and then finally the breaking ball to lock up Molina. Richick tripled in the Cardinal run in the second. Acquired by the uh, from the Angels in November of 2013, along with Peter Borges, or David Freeze, Fernando Salas. Richick was actually taken one pick ahead of Mike Trout in the draft. Both guys went to the Angels. Yeah, they're high on this kid. I mean, he is really strong. Forearms on him, kind of like Holiday. Backhanded play Castro. He sets, he throws, he got him at first. So far, a very clean game by the Cubs. Good defensive play here by Castro. Good stretch by Rizzo. Two quick outs for Arietta. He's retired 15 of the last 16 he's faced. He's been Max Scherzer like here lately. And there on Jay. Yeah, well, well, we talked about it last year and earlier on this year. He was among the league leaders last season in three up, three down innings. Greg Garcia. Left handed batters on deck for Lackey. As Pedro Strope throws in the Cubs bullpen. Lackey 
Mackey was good. So far, Arietta has been just a tad better. Ground right at Russell. 16 of 17. Sent down by Jake Arietta. Two to one Cubs. Game summary Cardinals play a lot of low scoring games because they just don't give up much. But Jake Arietta up to the challenge tonight seven innings, seven strikeouts, likely done at this point. Chris Bryant with the go ahead sack fly. How about Bryant leaving early yesterday with the flu like symptoms? Fowler with the ankle injury. Both guys uh, teaming up to help take the lead. Lackey, very good, but leaving trailing. Yes, and Arietta's done after seven yeah. solid frames. Yeah, that was the old managerial pat on the chest. Uh, way to go. Great effort. Went a complete game last time. We don't want to push too deep here tonight. Got some power arms out there in the pen. Let them finish up for you. Lefty Kevin Segrist pops a fastball in at 94 to Coglin. He'll complement that heater with a slider and a changeup. And he has performed quite well, a 172 ERA. Go two outside. Jake looking for win number eight here tonight. The Cubs can hang on. Tall southpaw wheels and the high fastballs hit on the ground is short. Going to be close, but he got him. That's Peralta getting Coglin. Well, in the non Max Scherzer category, uh, Jake Arietta has been as good as anybody here in the last week or so. Yeah, he's fun to watch pitch. Sometimes it's that slider that complements the fastball best, other times it's the curveball. That was a real good weapon for him here tonight.
Castro with one out, nobody on. Cardinals have done a, such a good job with the draft, not just the top of the draft. The closer Trevor Rosenthal, 21st round pick, 2009. In the community college, Kevin Segrist, Palm Beach Community College, 41st round, 2008. Two and one. Jake has a helmet on. This is the 15th sellout this season the Cardinals have had here at Bush Stadium 45,558. Bunch of sellouts here in St. Louis. Three and two. This Denorfia ready for a possible pinch hit appearance. This is going to join the Rockets. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll do both. Pinch it here. He can join the Rockettes when we're in New York. Three two has popped up. Wong makes a catch. Folks, if you miss any of today's action, ABC 7 will be rebroadcasting each one of the Cubs matchups on the Livewell Network. Today's encore of Cardinals Cubs will uh, be aired in its entirety. At 11 p.m. on ABC 7's digital channel 7.2, and the following cable channel positions listed there. And if you're uh, watching the rebroadcast, it's probably early in the morning. So happy Saturday. And, uh, don't stay out too late. Make sure you get a good night's sleep. No, the leftover pizza sounds good right now, but you'll thank me in the morning if you don't have it. Out toward left center and down for Mike Baxter. He's having a nice night, is he not? He is two hits and fantastic catch. A ribeye steak back in the fourth. Off the tough lefty. He gets a challenge fastball at 95 and He's up to the challenge. You know, we've been talking about Anthony Rizzo, and uh, you see him here either in the eighth or the ninth. Um, he has kind of fought the, uh, the elbow guard thing. I do wonder at some point this weekend if he might don it. We're getting grilled earlier. Something to watch for. There's Denorfia for Arietta. Yeah, unless it's really uncomfortable. You know, some guys just don't like the feeling of wearing any kind of a guard or a pad. I mean, if it's a macho thing, I would say don't you know, don't let that get in your way. Because um, it's more important to keep you on the field. It's such an important part, one of the most important players in the game. In the left for Denorfia. Baxter makes the turn. He's on his way to third. The throw's going to go there. It's late and offline. That allows Denorfia to take second. They might even give him a double. They did. And make Chris uh, five out of 11 now as a pinch hitter this year, and that's way above average. And now a chance for some insurance with Russell.
points is the difference between being down two to one and protecting a lead. If the Cardinals are protecting a lead here, Mike Matheny's probably mixing and matching here in the eighth. And Russell doesn't get the at bat off the left hand pitcher, and he would have had a, a pitcher available for Denorfi in that situation too. Change up. Zebris has been awfully tough on right handed batters. It's 158 against him. Two and two now. It's got a lot of life. Yeah. Gonna force him into the zone. Two two. He got a foul tip. Strike three. Up threatened but could not add to the lead. Stroke when we come back, 2 1. is brought to you by DeVry University different on purpose fun one tonight a tight tight ball game 2 1 Cubs we've had the better chances tonight as you can see 10 hits to the Cardinals three yeah this is um, I mean, a little different in that the uh, Cubs have the lead here but Similar to yesterday's ball game, where they had a lot of traffic and didn't score. Well, they didn't score at all in the ball game yesterday. They left 10 men on base here tonight, but it might be good enough if the bullpen can do their thing. And lately, they've been doing it quite well. Pedro Strope has a 273 ERA. He works for the 37th time. Facing pinch hitter Greg Garcia, middle infielder. One ball, no strikes. 
debuted last year. This is only his 27th Major League plate appearance. From El Cajon, California, went to the University of Hawaii in Honolulu. Seventh round pick in 2010. So he's been in their organization for a while. Two balls and a strike. Went through a little bit of a rough patch in May. He has turned things around. He's worked 11 consecutive scoreless appearances. Garcia has good on base skills, does not have a lot of power. Terribly surprising a Strope Garcia matchup would result in a three ball count. That one hit the deep center. Fowler still going back on it. Gone. Wow. Greg Garcia just hit his first major league home run to tie the game. Was not expecting that. Oh boy. Talk about beating the odds. We just got done talking about how good Strope ben has been of late. And now Garcia is not a power guy, but he gets to run the the gauntlet of handshakes there in the Cardinal dugout with a game tying home run. So the ability, the inability by the Cubs to add on allows the Cardinals to tie the game with one swing of the bat. A Toyota home run cam and a curtain call for Garcia. So going back to Garcia and his profile as a minor league hitter. You're three and one on him. Your, your thought is if you're Pedro Strope, I do not want to walk the leadoff man, right? Right. So you're way more willing to challenge a guy like him. Yeah, than you would say than you with somebody Reynolds. else. There, yeah. As a result, you got a pitch he could drive, and all of a sudden it's two to yeah. two. Yeah, when you fall behind, you're at the mercy of the count. And he slugged under 400 as a minor league hitter. Now, if you're stroke, you got to kind of pull it together here. That's hit long. Hit long. I think. So the last three runs that Strope has allowed have all been solo home runs. Holding his front foot, I didn't see it hit his front foot. I thought it hit his back foot. I saw that uh, front of the foot move a little bit. Yeah, it really hard. I, just, I think he, he rolled his ankle a little bit. Went out on that front leg. Watch, watch the, le the ankle roll. I think that's what he was reaching down. I'm, I'm not convinced that ball hit him. It's very tough to get that one overturned via replay. Yeah. Though. Oh yeah. That's the problem. Get their first home run in the pinch this season. Yeah, they, overall, they're not a home run hitting club. They don't hit many long balls, and you don't expect it from Garcia, but he delivered a big one there. Ball one outside. It's like Somebody's going to get ready quickly in the Cubs bullpen. I don't know if it's Jason Mott. Can't really tell at the moment. Carpenter 0 for 3 so far tonight. It is Jason Mott. He's 
not wasting any time. I don't know if I'd want to play catch with him. 35 feet. Well, no bullets. <laughs> He's in go mode right now. Get ready and get ready in a hurry. That was close. But ball out of the glove of Rizzo. Wong got hit by a pitch. Apparently in the bottom of his right foot, and then he just got hit by a pickoff attempt. And that one caught him in the hamstring of the quad. Good thing it did because if not, it's a little lot down there down towards the tarp, and he's going to get the second, possibly third base. Six deals, been caught four times. We, we talked to Joe a lot. About expected outcomes, and just about every at bat that, that goes on during a game, Joe kind of has an expected outcome. I guarantee you, when we talk to him tomorrow, he's going to say, "I did not see." No, we're going to see a yeah. home run. Yeah. I don't know how anybody would have. He had hit 27 in six made, uh, minor league seasons combined. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about this game, right? No matter how much we can predict based on computer models and statistical analysis, players can still make the unpredictable happen. Three two to Carpenter. After it goes to 3 2, that Carpenter's a 400 hitter. And a 604 on base percentage. And a high deep drive, and this one's going to stay in. Just got under it. Fowler makes the catch. Well, it looked pretty good off the bat. Fortunately, it stayed in. <laughs> And Wong was moving with the pitch, so he wasn't in position to tag in advance on this deep drive. Not that he would have anyway, but he might have thought about it. So he's breaking with the pitch. By the time he reads it as a play for Fowler, there's no way he's going to get back to first base in time to tag. Top of the order for the Cubs in the ninth. Come up with some huge hits late for the Cardinals this season. Correct me if I'm wrong, but was he not the first Cardinal shortstop ever to lead their club in home runs when he did that last year? We had that. Yes. Note. No. Yep. Doing it again this year. Let's rope out of sorts here tonight. Assume he's not swinging here. Ball four. Uh, 1899, by the way, was the last Cardinal shortstop, Bobby Wallace, uh, to lead their team. So he had modern baseball history. Walter last year did something no Cardinal shortstop had done previously, and that'll be it for Strope. 
So his uh, run of uh, quality work comes to an end, and it'll be Jason Mott. 2 2, the former Cardinal. Mott coming on. Two thousand eleven Cardinals twenty nine and twelve against the Cubs, but it's a different Cubs club here in twenty fifteen. They're hoping to change a lot of that. And they have a former Cardinal now in their bullpen, Jason Mott. Uh, Jason Mott had a long scoreless streak interrupted uh, a couple of appearances ago against the Dodgers. He gave up a home run to Jock Peterson, but he got the save in that ball game. It was a four to one game when he came in. Not the solo home run. Was able to finish the Dodgers off. Just picked up five wins in relief. Normally that's really not indicative of anything. Sometimes you're a little wary of a guy who picks up a lot of wins in relief. But he has been good. He's earned them. There's Reynolds. In at first base for the injured Matt Adams. He may be out a long time. Quad injury. Yeah, that's what uh, Holiday has. That's kind of the injury of the year. Uh, Anthony Rendon, but the Nationals just went on the DL with a quad. Go ahead run is his second. That's Wong Peralta, the runner at first. And Reynolds pops into left field. It'll be the shortstop, Castro. It's Justin Grimm, the righty, and there's Russell, the lefty. That'll be it for Mott. We'll see Russell versus Hayward. We'll be back in the eighth, two two.
is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Ford, America's best-selling brand. Check out our entire lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Statue of Stan the Man, usual. The all-time greats. James Russell, a left-hander, will face Jason Hayward, a left-handed batter. With two outs, two on, and a 2-2 tie. Russell with a 2.08 ERA. Allowed just one home run in 17 in the third league. It's 262 against the left-handed batters, 229. So comes in here to try to get the uh, Jason Hayward, uh, who has been really swinging it well, and Hayward is hitting 368 against left-handed pitching this year. So yeah. he's hung in there very nicely. He has been really good. Russell has stranded all 16 of his inherited runners so far this season. Mentioned Hayward in his career, 231, without a lot of power against lefties, but different story so far this season. 63 plate appearances. Pops up the first pitch. Russell asking for help, but he'll make the oh catch. My. Nobody else could get there. <laughs> oh my! That will end the inning. Fair catch. That heartbeat. Two two ties. We get into the ninth, and the Cardinals' closer is Trevor Rosenthal. And he will pitch in a tie ball game, and those numbers are pretty eye popping. Uh, yeah, well, they are. 056 ERA. He's allowed two runs so far this year. 32 and a third innings, 20 hits, struck out 34. Gave up one against Milwaukee April 15th. And then a run against the Pirates. On May 3rd. It's the only time he blew a save. This is not a save situation. He'll go uh, 96 to 99 with the fastball. Changeups his best secondary pitch. That's it right there. He'll also throw 
a curveball and he'll cut his fastball. Steam that one in there at 98. Speaking of 98, there's hard throwing Hecker. Fowler making sure he got that front foot down early that time. Rosenthal saved 45 games for the Cardinals. He failed to convert on six occasions. Full count, three and two. Get it ready. Here it is, and he struck him out, hitting 99 on the gun. Well, ready or not, here I come in 99, down and in a little bit. Fowler not able to get to it. Zone. Last week, Anthony Rizzo batting 407 on an 852 slugging percentage and three long balls. Got drilled earlier in the game by a lackey fastball that seemed to be bothering him his last time up. Good swing. Something else possibly bothering him? Lunge for that one, and I just feel like it's at right arm slash elbow. I have to say, he's been hit 15 times. This is the first one. That has seemingly lingered. I'm sure that a few have caused pretty large bruises and hurt more than he let on. Left field and foul. But he didn't run. He yeah. thought it was either gone or foul. He didn't know where it was. Well, did he not see it? Didn't see it. Kind of looking around. Like, where is it? Jay coming in a few steps and two outs. Chris Bryant, go ahead, sack fly in the seventh. Looked pretty good at that time. 
Greg Garcia off the bench with his first major league home run to tie it off Pedro Strope in the eighth. One and one. Couple of years, these teams have played a lot of tight games. A couple one run games last time the Cubs were in town. The handle and get behind the Cardinal dugout. Executed change changeup there by Rosenthal, and I'm sure they thought they'd get a chase from Bryant. Pretty good take. One hundred that time. Three and two. Swung and missed at a slider earlier, but uh, that slider has been uh, elevated here in this at bat. That's actually, actually a change. Up. change yeah. yeah, it was right. So you're 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 always guarding against a fastball and then adjusting, but with two strikes here and that pitch where it was. Are you just selling out on a fastball? I will, yeah. And just uh, try uh, to hit it 900 feet. Well, I'm just, yeah, you know, yeah, I think from the pitcher's point of view, you're trying to stay away from power with Bryant. That's not easy to do because he handles a lot of different pitches. But you know, down and away fastball is probably the way to go if you can command it out there. And yeah, for Bryant, you got to be looking heater here. He gets one and he hits a bouncer to the shortstop, Peralta. Stretched by Reynolds. Cubs go down in order. Bottom nine, two, two.
two to two. We play the bottom of the ninth. It'll be Hector Rondon against Yadier Molina. Hector, 235, earned run average, 12 saves and 15 tries. This is not a save opportunity. Lee gets 237 against them. Molina, Grichuk, and Jay for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the ninth. Don Roach tomorrow for the Cubs will be making his second major league start. Michael Walker will pitch for the Cardinals. Slider strike. Jake Arietta was brilliant tonight, but no W. Pulled foul. Swing and a miss. He got him. You know, usually controls the strike zone better than that. That one not even close. Slider here for Hector. One strike to Gritchick. Another one. Two strikes. Yeah, I think, you know, Gritchick's a good fastball hitter. I think he will expand. When you get ahead of him, he'll spin it out of the zone, he'll chase it. Struck him out 97 just off the plate. Two down. A little baby cutter, not a lot of movement, but don't need a lot at 97. John Jay. He has singled. Rounded it out a couple of times. We see that batting average a lot higher than it is right now for Jay. And Russell will throw him out. We'll go to extras. Tenth inning around the corner. 2 2 from St. Louis.
Cardinals tied it in the eighth. This is really nothing new for the Cubs. Played a lot of close games, a lot of extra innings games. The good news is, I guess they've been largely successful. Uh, 18 and 12 in games decided by one, eight and three in extra innings. The Cardinals 15 and 11 in one-run games, five and three in extra innings. There's no guarantee this will be a one-run decision. You know when the uh, the DJ at the wedding says, "Hey, let's uh, let's slow it down now and then slow dance." And the slow yeah. dance has just entered the game for the Cardinals after the hundred-mile offerings of uh, Rosenthal. Here comes the 39-year-old crafty lefty Randy Choate, and we'll throw that sinker up there at about 83. So after ACDC, we've got a little Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to slow it down. I can't fight this feeling, <laughs> but it works. Sinkers and sliders. We'll Caesar, the right-handed bat, instead of Montero. Punched in the air out to Hayward. Easy play for Jason, and he's got it. So pinch hitter Caesar flies to right. Chris Cogman will be pulled back. I think. Yep. David Ross probably since Montero's already been hit for. The Northia has been used. And here comes Ross. Is there. Uh, well there would be yeah because. Uh, Artolo Cologne is what 42 but this is a pretty old matchup here with 39 year old Choate and 38 year old Ross. Yeah it's a good call it's not going to happen though. Yeah. Get Manus. Peter Borges will come in for Jay. Ready to final out. The ninth. Borges will probably go into that nine spot, meaning he'll lead off the bottom of this inning. We'll get the new Cardinal pitcher in a moment. Seth Manus, ground ball specialist, now working on the mound. Yeah, so the DJ is going to amp it up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Manus is more of a finesse guy, too. His fastball below league average will sit around 88, 89 miles an hour, but you know, sinkers keeps the ball down near the bottom of the knees. It's two ground balls for every fly ball. Available on the Cubs bench. David 
Ross will be looking for that first pitch sinker. He'll hope it's uh, elevated a little bit. And he'll take a big swing at it if it is. And a base hit. And it worked. Castro. Yeah, well, here you go. So we talk a lot about Joe's matrix of outcomes. This combination, Manus and Castro, is a very high percentage chance of a ground ball here. That might be as high as it gets yeah, on yeah. that matrix. Yeah, with this, 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 with these two clubs. So we could see Ross on the move here. He's not. Ball one. It's a tough call for manager because Castro, you know, capable of hitting one in the gap or poking one into the corner for extra bases. Put hit and run on. You're forcing him to swing at whatever it is Manus throws up there. To swing and miss, Ross is toast. Mike Matheny will have at his disposal how often Joe Madden starts base runners in this situation. He'll know what count he likes to start the runner on. Might even think pitch out. If he thinks they're going to play a little hit and run. This would be the pitch if you're going to do it. There he goes. Bounce foul. Good call. Was not on the move that time. Yeah, he's just trying to guess along with the pitcher and the catcher what they're going to throw. 2 1, you know, they're not going to pitch out, or it's highly unlikely that they would pitch out. You're probably going to get a fastball or sinker from Manus in that count. You might get a breaking ball here. Either way, it's a, it's a ground ball type pitch. Castro, you got to like the the hole on the left side with Carpenter hugging the line as they try to take away the double. Yeah, and that's you know the, Castro hits a lot of balls on the ground to the left side, but not many right down the third baseline. I'm not even convinced if he did, if Ross would score, especially with the way that sidewalk mm -hmm. kind of juts out. So if you get one past Carpenter, if he were moving, you know, if he were playing a little bit to his left and into that corner, it's probably going to carry him off that sidewall right to the left fielder yeah. anyway. Tell you the other possibility here with Carpenter now really backed up 
behind third base. Castro hits a lot of those slow rollers on the left side too. Uh, when that breaking ball or sinker away that he kind of lunges and rolls over on. Yeah. Slow roller up towards third base could turn into an infield hit for Castro. But it's the nature of the game. It's all about compromise. It's take away one thing and give up something else. There's the chopper pretty much right to Carpenter and they can only get one so Castro keeps the inning alive. It's the neighborhood play I don't think Wong was on the bag when that ball got there. Not subject to replay review. Well, it's been a good night for Baxter so far. A couple of hits and RBI. Very nice play in the outfield. That ball is going to get down. Castro is going to stop. He's already in scoring position. Three hits tonight for Mike Baxter. Smart hitter. I want to try to pull that sinker ball from the right hander so it gets the hands pulled in. Goes it into shallow center. From Herrera. So Joel Madden has emptied his bench. And he's done before second career three hit game for Mike Baxter. Last time was in 2012 with the Mets. Napping that mid out there is Justin Grimm. Herrera batting for Rondon. Two on, two down. Tenth inning. Strike two. Ooh. Ooh. Not sure about that one. Let's look at our Xfinity pitch tracks as Molina sets up off the outside corner. Eh, better than I thought. Swing and a miss. To end the inning, Cubs lead two. Still tied at two.
pinch hitting from Miguel Montero. Ross stays in the catch. Justin Graham. 153 the ERA. This is his 22nd time to the mound. He'll get the bottom of the 10th. Or just. Came into the double switch. He'll lead off the inning and then it's the top Wong and Carpenter. Pitch to Peter Borges. It's the money pitch right there. If you can make that whenever you want to, we'll be in this game a long time. Outside corner fastball. Lower part of the zone. Mm -hmm. That's what he did so well last year when he turned his season around. He struggled early on and really got locked in, hanging away, down and away, with the knees on the outside corner. Got that knee buckling curveball to go along with it. Trouble. And with Borges' speed, he's going to have extra bases, a double. Winning run is there with nobody out. Their pinch hitters tonight have come up huge. Garcia with a game tying homer in the eighth. And not really a pinch hit at bat because he came into play center, but essentially that. Yeah, bench guy. The breaking ball didn't have the good bite on it. They're playing him the other way. If he were a pull hitter, he might have been able to hold him with a single there. Wong is the batter and pitcher and catcher will talk here. Corner man in. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mike Matheny can play it a couple of different ways here. But Wong's a good hitter, so you can just let him swing away and hope that if he didn't drive in the run, he at least pull the ball on the ground and get him to third base or he could just bunt. Either way, the Cubs are unlikely to pitch to Carpenter. Not showing. Bunt at all. One ball, no strikes. Have no Matt Holiday in the middle of the order. I think that changed the thinking a little bit for Matheny. He has Holiday behind Carpenter. Maybe he bunts here. Shank foul. Now you'd like to shorten up your outfield here, and the Cubs have a little bit. They have a, a fighting chance on a line drive base hit to throw out board. The problem is, you know, Wong's got some pop. You got to be able to be in position to retreat and catch a deep fly ball. Ground ball, and that hits the bag. Everybody safe. The ball hits second base. First and third now. Castro there in position to make a play on that ball. He would have had Wong at first base had it not hit the bag. It's just buzzard's luck there for the Cubs. Here comes Joe Madden, and now they'll try to figure out strategy. Probably walk Carpenter. They're looking at a five man infield. They're calling Baxter in. Have left 12 men on base tonight. Yeah, that's kind of lost in the shuffle right now. The Cubs have 12 hits and only two runs. Yeah. 
It hardly matters at the moment. It's 2 2. And a pretty dire situation here for a pitcher against. It's going to be the heart of the Cardinals order. If you leave 12 on and you score five or six. Not such a bad thing. It just means you had a ton of base runners and you're able to score your fair share. You leave 12, you've only scored two. It just speaks of many lost opportunities. That's the third most, tied for the third most runners left on in a game this year for the Cubs. So they intentionally walk Carpenter. The fans, the Cardinals are booing, which I never understood. The home team is going to have bases loaded, nobody out. <laughs> With a chance to win the game and they're booing. The default response to the intentional walk. He just, Carpenter's just he just had such good discipline at the plate. He's really one of the last guys in the league you want to see in a situation like this. Akin to a basketball game, They're coming down to the final seconds, and you, know, you want the ball in that guy's hand. That's the same thing with Carpenter. Critical situation late, you want to have him at the plate if you're the Cardinals, and if you're the Cubs, you want no part of them. So here's how the infield looks Rizzo, Baxter on the right, Russell, Castro, Bryant on the left. You see where Fowler and Caesar are playing. So the left fielder now moving over into right center. Here's the pitch. Ball one to Peralta. Hard not to let the adrenaline get the best of you in this situation if you're Justin Graham and overthrow. Winning run at third and the guy with the best speed on the bags right now and that's Borges. Fouled off. Well the first two innings remember. Two Cardinal runners were thrown out at home on tag plays. Right now would be a force play. One ball, one strike. Here it is. Could have been two and one. Both bullpens are quiet. This game right now is Grimm versus Peralta. Off the end of the bat, on the ground, throw to the plate. Cardinals win. Cardinals win. Borges is injured. A little collision there as the throw. Was a skew and yeah, it's the ball didn't have enough pace on it. And Mike Baxter was on the outfielder who had moved into the infield, made the play on that ball. So the final score in ten innings. It looks like Borges a little woozy. Three to St. Louis in the Hyundai play of the game. I have not heard a scoring decision on this yet, but it doesn't really matter as they win it in ten. I bet you. It'll be an infield yeah, hit. I think he was going to beat that play even with an accurate throw. I think you're right. With his speed, and that's slowly hit ground ball. Ooh, it looked like he got hit in the head as Ross tried to dive over him to catch that throw. Tough loss for the Cubs tonight. So that's the Hyundai play of the game. Yeah, they had a lead, uh, giving it to the bullpen, a bullpen which. Had been so good as of late, but as we mentioned, their role players, the Cardinals just get contributions. It well, seems like on know, a nightly basis from a lot of different people. Yeah, it's, you know, this, this team has been unbelievable.